It's new bike day again today, and I'm heading to the Forge in Gomshaw to ride a Santa Cruz Heckler SL. You know these guys at the Forge Ace Cycles? No. No? Too old for that guy to think. Yeah. I've never seen this shop open. No, do you come here every day? Once a week. Right, let's go and see if Toby's got his bike sorted. Hey Tobes, how's it going? Yeah, good buddy, what took you so long? Right, you know, I gotta drive down from North London, right? Where's this bike? Can't miss it, mate. The magenta one's just sitting there. Oh man, it looks amazing. So when I first saw the Heckler SL, I was like, oh my God, this bike could be amazing. It's got, I mean, it's got the Fazua Ride 60 system, which totally is my favorite um, mid-powered e-bike system because it's the only bike you don't need a range extender straight out of the box on. Also, the numbers look really good. Like the Geo's good on this bike, Toby, isn't it? Yeah, it's basically a lightweight e-bike Bronson. We got 150 on the back, 160 on the front, 64 degree head angle, uh, five sizes. Large is putting you into, 478 in the reach. Yeah, so about um, 480, which is my, yeah. my, my size for a large, really. Yeah, which, yeah. which is a good number, good yeah. number. Um, size specific back ends, really cool. Seeing that coming out a lot more on the bikes. Um, just makes sense. Why should everyone share the same back end length when the reach changes? Okay, so Doug, is there any wheel size options on this bike? No, MX only across all the sizes. Um, base just like the Bronson. It's mullet only, 29 front, 27 half rear. So tell me what model are we looking at here? So this is the S model. It's got a C frame. Um, they do do CC frames as you go up the range. Real thinking man sort of spec. You've got your GX mechanical, RockShox suspension, Bergtech finishing kit, uh, code brakes. Only thing that's different on this to a stock bike would be this has got a reverb on it. Um, Axis reverb, reason for that is it's demo bike, same sort of post going up and down for different riders and kinking that hose and totally. cable. Yeah, an absolute pain, right? You've got a stock build right here, haven't you? Um, if the gloss magenta is not for you, this is a the matte silver that they do, and that is stock, ready to go with your Select Plus suspension. And as you can see, it's got your one up seat post, which is a rad post. So I don't know about you, Toby, but um, if I was picking a color, magenta for photos, but this is a one on one ride. Yeah, it's definitely a safer bet, but yeah. I'm not a jazzy sort of bike color guy, but it's pretty neat. It's got a little fleck to it as well. Yeah. Yeah, what are you, you going to do? I don't know. I'm going silver. So Toby, how much are we looking at for this build? This build is 7.6. So 7,600 pounds. Okay, yeah. that's pretty reasonable, right? For a lightweight mid-power e-bike. Yeah, I think that's real good. And it's, like I said, thinking mad spec. This is not going to let you down in any way, and the suspension's real sweet. The only bit you're saving money on is like the drive track, and GX Mechanical's amazing. Yeah, I think GX is great, right? Yeah. So Toby, what's the claimed weight on this bike? Claimed weight on this, 19.3 kgs. Okay. Well, I think we should whip the pedals off, the Bergtech pedals off, and get it on the scales, or shall we weigh the XL, Toby? Because it's got the right seat post in it, yeah. and then that's going to be that's going to be one of the heaviest options because it's the biggest frame. Yeah, and let's face it, it's not going to make a huge difference. That little bit of extra carbon. Exactly. Let's see what it weighs. So, if you were coming in to pick up your new bike, uh, first thing we'd do is we would set the suspension up to Santa Cruz base settings, which is super easy to find on the website. That will give us a date and point to then work on with you once you've had some time on the bike. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get you just sitting on the bike and we're gonna have a play with bar roll, bar height, uh, maybe chop the bars down, they all come as 800s on these Bergtex. Um, lever angles, just make sure that everything feels really nice and ergonomic for you. I'm 83 kilos, so let's say, what, 85 kilos of kit? Yeah, let's do that. Cool, I'm just on the Santa Cruz website now. I've gone to shock setup, and I'm gonna scroll through, make sure you choose the right bike. This is an S model, so we're gonna obviously choose the S bike. And then we're gonna work off your weight, which is about 85 kgs. So yeah, let's go for it. So Toby, why is it important that you, you pick the precise model? 
because you've got different suspension components on there, uh, different levels of damper, really. They've all got 160, 150, but the different dampers probably support you differently, so it might okay. have slightly different air pressures. Cool. Your weight, Santa Cruz I reckon 210 on the back end, so we're just gonna add a little bit here, and then we'll have to re-equalize the shock just to double check things. What do you want, 22? Yeah, 22 in front, because it's XO casing. And XO what, plus in the rear. XO plus on the rear, I'd say 26. 26, sweet. Yeah. So I don't know about you, Toby, but I'm done with chit chatting about bikes and doing setup. Should we go and do some ride some trails? Yeah, we've got some on the doorstep. Yeah, it's the best thing about here, right? Let me grab a helmet. Toby's got the coolest van and mountain biking, I reckon. What is it, Toby? Short wheelbase, low top sprinter. Okay, so there's three power modes on the Fazua Ride 60 system. Um, I've currently got it turned off. I just want to show you the difference in speed. So this is me putting in quite a bit of effort. And now I'm going to flick it up one mode. I've changed gear. Second mode, change gear again. Third mode, double shift. Yeah, the difference in speed for climbing with the motor turned off and on, it's pretty pronounced. So the other thing you can hear on that climb is as I go through the power modes, the noise of the motor changes too. Oh, there's a trail in here somewhere. Oh! <laughs> that corner is pretty good. It actually shot me back up the hill. <laughs> So yeah, that's like just a quick couple of spins on the new Heckler SL. I'd say for me, Togs, like at 5.11, the size L is like pretty much a perfect fit. I yeah. Mean, you had a little blast on it, you're a bit shorter than me. Yeah, 5.8, but maybe a long body and short legs. So I do like a bigger bike, but I think I'd definitely flip out that 42 and a half mil stem so for a 35, which is why I do on all the large Santa Cruz anyway. Okay. I think so you don't be think because it's a slightly heavier bike and it's an e-bike and it's more stable, you could actually just ride the medium? <laughs> that has crossed my mind downsizing on it, but I think it's probably too big a jump to what I'm used okay. to. Okay. I think it would uh, just feel a little bit more crouched and like, <laughs> In, in the reach, and I think that would feel different. Uh, cramp, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think the sizing feels really good. I also don't run an 800 bar. Okay. So a slightly yeah, yeah. shorter yeah, bar. Yeah, me neither. I run a 780, but so I'd have, I could chop these down too. And I think that would make it feel for me a touch smaller as well. Yeah, yeah. I think like for me, the bike's really quiet on the ground. So the motor's pretty quiet, but the bike's actually really quiet when you're covering ground on it. So like it's a combination, I think of the tires, the frame, the suspension. It's got the real sweet little uh, custom-made chain yeah. stay protector. Just feels really, We've done a really, good job with that. Really, really quiet. I really like that. There's no cable rattle on it. Um, bike feels poppy. It feels lively. Doesn't feel like. I mean, it's nearly 20 kilos, but it doesn't feel heavy, right? Yeah. Um, we haven't played with the suspension. That little no. uh, so, so the base, base one, setting yeah, felt. The base setting was pretty good, actually. Um, we, we did do a little bit more air in the fork. We, that's typically what I run is just a little bit firmer fork. Yeah, we did. Um, and that worked out a treat. And I really like that little. There's a little window in the side of the frame. We can go and see how much travel you're using on the bike. Oh yeah, I can see where those roots are coming. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> the boys run out of talent. You're right about that corner being loose. <laughs> Slick, isn't it? <laughs> so Toby, one of the things I think with these lightweight e-bikes that people are getting wrong is they keep comparing them to full power bikes and it's like, should I get lightweight, full power? I mean, really, I think for me, the real comparison for these bikes is should you get an analog bike or should you get one of these? Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. They feel to me a lot closer to an analog bike than a full fat e-bike. They do feel pretty similar to an analog. The big question there has got to be, the difference in price yeah totally. you know because right. if you've got a four grand budget yeah. you're not getting on you're an not, SL. You're not, you're, well you're not getting a lightweight lightweight bike <laughs> that's, that's no for sure, no right? no you're going to get yeah, a yeah. very basic full fat yeah you're not going to be getting into yeah, totally. you know your super trick nice new these yeah. new platforms if you want a really lightweight mid-powered e-bike you gotta spend a ton of money yeah right? yeah yeah that's just out of reach for a lot of people yeah 
it's not a matter of four grand to five grand. It's literally four grand analog is going to put you into seven grand in an SL platform. So I got a different question for you then. If someone's got a really trick analog bike, should they get another really trick analog bike or should they get something like this? I've been on SL since day one when yeah. Spech launched the Levo SL yeah. and I haven't looked back and it's my go-to. I'm time poor, I'm busy and I love biking. So I get more yeah. riding. Totally. I mean, it's simple. I think that pretty much sums it up, right? Yeah. Nice yeah. Tubs. Thanks for that. So that was an amazing day of riding with Toby from Ace Bicycles on the Santa Cruz Heckler SL. A few things I thought about that bike. I mean, obviously Toby's clearly sold on the whole SL platform thing. Um, the specific to the Heckler SL, um, it's not crazy light, like it's over 19 kilos, but it's got that 430 watt hour battery inside the down tube. So you really don't need the range extender straight away. Um, the power is really good. I mean, you saw how fast the bike rockets up the climbs. Um, and I really liked, I really liked how it cornered. I mean, we, we hit a lot of corners, right? And you could see, you could just basically cornered like it was rails. Well, it did until, like Toby said, I ran out of talent. But I think the MX wheel size and the way the, the, the suspension's got good support, but it's still like a kind of pitter-patter on the rear. Um, that makes a really big difference in, in terms of how you can rail those kind of flat turns. So I really like that aspect to it. I mean, it looks amazing. The, I mean, it's not a cheap bike, but it's not the most expensive SL bike I've ridden either. And I think with that 160 mil fork, 150 mil on the rear, it's really versatile. Like the tracks we rode weren't super rough. Um, so it's hard to say how good the suspension is, um, but the bike felt was really fun. It was really playful. Um, and it's definitely one bike that we're gonna ha have to get in our lightweight SL e-bike test. And um, so fingers crossed, Santa Cruz will send us one. Thanks for watching. And if you wanna see more content like this, just let us know in the comments. Cheers.